Well, covering my name, Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Dr. Rosa, a friend of ours, sent us a, a, a link on Texas News Studio. Breaking news. They were reporting from Daily Mail. Also, uh, Mail Online is another source that has been reporting this as far as the English language that Putin is bearing sleeper nukes off the coast of America in the event of a third world war where he can create massive tidal waves to wipe out major cities, including that of New York, uh, Miami, and many other cities of the like there. I just cannot help but think of all of these people that have had visions and dreams of massive tidal waves. There's been even those of Los Angeles, California going under the sea, movies made by about these things. But when it comes to the East Coast, that's one that most people think, well, there's no fault lines that could really cause these massive tidal waves. Where do the people get their dreams and visions from about these massive tidal waves? Even my wife herself has had dreams of unbelievable tidal waves striking South Florida that would just knock buildings over, huge high rises would topple over like buses going through a river after a major flood. And people just doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to add up. But if what we are seeing is true, according to one retired uh, Russian colonel, then it may very well have some weight about what's going on. Let me share some information with you on this. Uh, of course, like I said, Mail Online also, we saw the article that they had regarding this uh, and uh, their title, Putin is planning deep sea mole nukes near the U.S. capable of causing tsunami, Russian military, military expert claims. And of course, that military expert is none other than Viktor Barnartz, a former Russian colonel and defense ministry spokesman, and he claimed Russia has planted sleeper nukes. Well. We did a little bit of research just to make sure that this is in fact being uh, stated in the Russian media. But what's more troubling, it goes beyond just being stated in the Russian media. We've actually gone through three different articles in the Russian language on Russian websites only to find out not only is it true, but there's no denying the possibility of it being true in Russian media. That's a bit concerning. Russian nuclear tsunami, Putin's submarines laid deep sea bombs ready to destroy the U.S., states this particular article here. And in the article here, it goes a little bit deeper in what Victor Barnett is actually speaking about. It says here, retired Army colonel and former defense ministry spokesman says that Russia has already begun laying thermonuclear mo mo molar charges on the eastern coast of the United States. These robotic bombs are capable of digging themselves into the bottom of the ground and sleeping until they get a command to detonate. Atomic bombs are combined in a common information network and can be undermined uh, synchronous, excuse me, uh, synchronously to create massive super tsunami when they are eroded. The wave will wash away all the cities along the American coast. If these terrible statements are true, then in the case of the Russian aggression, gulls and ducks will fly in places the cities of New York, Boston, and Miami giving you even the targets. The Americans are deploying their tanks, planes, and bat battalions of uh, Spatsna along the Russian border, says uh, Barnett. And we, in turn, quietly sow the U.S. coastline with moth warheads, or some call it molar warheads. Barnett made these shocking statements in an interview with the Russian newspaper Cosmo, Cosmokaya Pravda and believes that the, uh, the tactic is intended to force Donald Trump to return, uh, excuse me, to uh, to return a few steps to unleash uh, a war. Now that's again, this is being translated uh, using Google there, just to kind of make it quicker and easier for us to bring this to you. So the right wording there, I can't actually say if that's right, is intended to force Donald Trump to return a few steps to unleash a war. I don't think that's translated exactly right, but anyway, I think we get the gist of what's going on. The U.S. is, a, is the eternal world champion in the amount of its military budget, says Barnett in an interview. The U.S. military budget is almost $600 billion, which is 10 times more than that in Russia. So, as a consequence, what are they doing? They're planning all these nuclear bombs to be able to have major impact and devastation to American coastlines. So maybe all these dreams and visions aren't just so far off, are they? And then again, we think too, again, another uh, interesting point made in the Bible when it says, the sea a-roaring. 
Hmm, that does sound like tidal waves. Russia will not compete with the U.S., he says, uh, in defense spending. We are in a different weight category. Therefore, the main issue for us is to ensure the defense of Russia at a lower price. I am sure that we have already found asymmetric answers. I do not see a big problem here, he goes on to state in his concluding comments there. You know, friends, that's a bit troubling, to say the very least. And uh, also, another news, maybe a possibility of an upturn, a good uh, good news here that could settle these, uh, these threats down that are being faced in the world uh, with a possible nuclear war that could spiral out of control. And again, I have to reiterate about this when uh, China, Russia, both stating that they need to bring calm when it comes to North Korea as they have both stated this could spiral out of control to a third world war. Don't forget, a third world war means that more than one country is involved with another country fighting. In other words, it's not just the United States taking out North Korea. If this could spiral out of control to a third world war, a nuclear war, that means many other countries may get involved. And even if China and Russia were to help the United States to take down Kim Jong-un, that's still not a spiraling out of control third world war. In fact, if anything, it brings this little nation fast to, a, to an end than anything else. But when the Chinese and the Russian officials are saying spiraling out of control to a third world war, that is letting you know that they are there to also defend North Korea. And if that's the case, that's what would spiral out of control. Anyway, though, as I said, a little bit of a good news, an uptick here. We know that uh, this is from the Kremlin's own YouTube channel where uh, President Putin and that of Gen uh, Chancellor Merkel met speaking on a, a variety of topics, but in their press briefing here, one of the things that Merkel speaks about is the lifting of sanctions. It seems that Germany has about had enough of the sanctions, keeping in mind that the Germ Germany and Russia, they are the two major trading partners. And of course, Germany still gets all of its natural gas from Gazprom. I say all of it, a major portion of it. And that bill continues to rise with Russia and it's going to flip-flop uh, the, the, the balance there if Germany is not able to begin once again being a trade partner with Russia to keep an even kill there on their trade deficit there. Listen to what Angela Merkel though has to say here uh, in her statement uh, just about this lifting of sanctions. So I would like that we will ensure that we will be able to lift sanctions with addition, uh, addition agreements. Night, of course, uh, Kapansky, Edge, yet we will all made up this bilateral contacts within ec economy and the youth exchange. So she's actually, once again, trying to lift the sanctions. You have to remember, Angela Merkel never wanted the sanctions placed on Russia to begin with. This was something that was pressured by uh, the Barack Obama administration uh, back, uh, back then. And of course, what was kind of odd is that she really began to go along with the sanction after the tragic uh, Airbus crash that killed all these young people there over the French Alps there. Whether or not the two are related, I can't really say, but it is kind of odd that that happened at about that time. Of course, they blamed it on some wild, crazy Muslim guy wanting to kill everybody on the plane, which I really think is nonsense. Uh, people that do forget, Boeing has that nice little thing installed on these planes here that uh, allow them to take control of a plane in case some wild lunatic maniac pilot decides to go crash the plane into a side of a mountain and Boeing can land that plane anywhere in the world they so desire. And they also have the ability to put gas in the cockpit, put that pilot to sleep, relax them, whatever the case may be. Maybe this is why that pilot just kind of breathed normally as that plane went all the way down and crashed into the mountain. And of course, everybody in the other part of the plane were all screaming frantically. Well, Boeing put all those, uh, those features in there. And of course, if he was going to crash the plane into the side of the mountain, I'm sure his heart rate would have been up too. And so would his breathing. But it was odd that he was awfully calm until time of impact. Sounds like Boeing was using their little gadget they have in the Boeing planes there. But rather, in, instead of landing it, maybe that pilot, that co-pilot just went to sleep. Make it look good. 
I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, stand with us again, and I, I, I hate to bring this up so often, guys, but we're just looking to see those that are interested in helping to support bring this news broadcast to cable television across, or excuse me, satellite television across the United States, 20 million homes. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, definitely help support the work we're doing. We have a donate button right here above uh, the subscribe button on our channel. But more importantly, if you happen to have some type of business that could benefit from advertising to sponsor our broadcasts, send me an email. I'll place it in the description here below. I know I've said it a couple of times and every time I still forget to put it in there until after maybe 20,000 views, I am going to put it in today. I promise by the grace of God, I'm not going to forget. Uh, but if you'd like to be a sponsor, uh, you can actually sponsor the broadcast. We can do a, uh, or if you already have a commercial, we can place your commercial in uh, the, the news broadcast. It'll, it'll actually air once a week. It'll be more like a, a overview of the week's news that will air there. And it'll also give the people in America the opportunity to know where we are here on YouTube. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. America.